Wednesday, October 26th, 2016. Let's I'm talk. visiting. Let's talk. You're up. My name is Beverly Sanders, and today is Wednesday, October 26, 2016. I'm visiting with Sherma Dean in McFarland Memorial United Methodist Church in Norman, Oklahoma. Joe Sanders will be assisting with the recording equipment and sometimes adding a question of his own. This interview is for the historical records of McFarland United Methodist Church, as well as the Voices of Oklahoma United Methodism project of the Oklahoma Conference Oral History Research Program. This research program is coordinated through the Commission on Archives and History with the support of the Oklahoma United Methodist Historical Society. Chairman Dean, we certainly do appreciate your taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know that we had a hard enough time scheduling this, so I know how busy you are, and we appreciate your taking the time to come and visit with us today and share some of your memories of uh, working here at McFarland, being, being one of the uh, leaders in McFarland. Well, thank you. I hope that I may be able to tell you things that you need to know. My name is Sherma Dean, and I was born in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. And as I grew up, we, I lived in um, Durant, o Oklahoma City, Durant, and then Shawnee. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm married to Merrill Dean, and we have two sons. Uh, Stephen lives in Ohio. He is a vascular disease specialist oh, wow. and works with the Ohio State University Med School. And he teaches and lectures and um, has patients. They have, mm -hmm. his have to be referred. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, well, and he has one daughter, Annie. And then Ma uh, Michael, our youngest son, uh, lives in Edmond now. He used to live in Oklahoma City. He and Barbara got married at Crown Heights Methodist Church. Well, and Stephen and his wife got married in uh, Ohio in a Methodist church. Mm -hmm. uh, S Michael and Barbara have two daughters, uh, Madison and Megan. Madison's the oldest, she's 18 now, and um, she is going to Florida Atlantic, which I'd never heard of, uh -huh. but she found it. It's in Boca Raton, and it's a science and math school, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good kind of school. Science and math. Oh, okay. So and that's what she's interested mm -hmm. in. I mean, you know, this, she's taking biology and chemistry this first semester. I see. Mm -hmm. And then Megan uh, is a senior in high school, and um, anyway, we don't know what she's going to do yet. <laughs> anyway, Annie's a junior, so they're all getting up there. They just grow up way too fast. Uh, what else did I need to Let's say? Let's see, how about your own education? You, oh. you mentioned you lived several different places. Where'd yes. you, where'd you uh, graduate from high school? Uh, Shawnee, Shawnee mm -hmm. High. And uh, then I went to OU. Uh, I was there for three years. I did not graduate. Uh -huh. um, but. Um, Let's see. What did you study primarily while you were there? Well, business. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, anyway, I enjoyed it. I loved mm -hmm. it. And then uh, while I was there, I came to McFarland, so I, I knew mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. I see. So. And you've already told us about your family and your spouse, and uh, how you got to Norman is that you were here for first. No, I never no? lived in Norman before. Oh, um, uh -huh. I married Merrill in 1959. And um, he was in the Air Force. Uh -huh. And so after we got married, we, we lived in Shreveport, Louisiana, and um, then Altus. So I've been all over Oklahoma yeah. except the upper, upper part. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so he went to Altus. And then from Altus, we went to, let's see, Alabama. We were in Alabama at Montgomery twice. Uh -huh. uh, he was a teacher at. Um, officer's training school, and then um, command and staff. Mm -hmm. So from there, we went to uh, Arizona. At all that time, he was flying uh, tankers. And so then we went to Arizona, where he upgraded to the F-4. And then um, I stayed there, and he went to Vietnam. And I ended up back here because of a, we rented a house, and they sold it, and I had to get out. But anyway, then we went to Florida, and we were down there for about, I guess, 18 months or so. And then he got the opportunity to go to a college and get a doctorate. So one of, there was OU, I remember, and then there was Arizona State. But he chose 
you know, OU because mother and daddy by that time lived here. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the boys to have their grandparents, you know, see them grow up. So we bought a house and um, he went to school. And then when he had to go back to the Air Force, uh, we kept the house and Daddy watched over it for us while we were gone. And uh, let's see, where do we go from there? I, I don't know. Ed, so when, when did you finally settle into Norman? Uh, we moved. To stay the first this time, time was seventy-two, and the second time was seventy-eight. Mm -hmm. And he was out at Tinker. Uh -huh. So that's how we got here. I see. And uh, you've been you were associated with McFarland basically any time well, you I, got back to to Norman. I had gone to. Uh, to McFarland when we were obviously in college, but uh, when we got here, we went ahead and we visited Goodrich and St. Stephen's and then McFarland. But we chose McFarland because it was a lot like the church I went to in Shawnee. Uh -huh. This is much bigger, but it was the same structure and I uh -huh. liked it. And this sounds crazy, but I didn't want to go to, <laughs> well, we went to visit St. Stephen's, which is closer to our house. Uh -huh. Uh, walked in and lo and behold, who was the minister? Bill Oden. Uh -huh. I had gone to the junior senior prom my junior year with him. Oh. <laughs> and somehow or other, I just, I just, you know, so that uh, kind of got to yeah. <laughs> take care of that. But <laughs> isn't that funny? And then he later became a bishop. Oh yeah. So anyway, we chose McFarland, and we, I can, we, I can we see were that. very happy here. Yeah. So then you decided to McFarland, and so who was the minister when you? Phil. Phil was already in the, in at, at the time that you came back. Seventy-eight. Went Seventy-eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I know that you were you were with McFarland for a long time. Uh, who were some of the other ministers that came through during the time that you were? Well, uh, Dick House. Mm -hmm. But that's and there was another one, but the game was this MC, but I can't remember his name. But there was one other that came. Uh -huh. Okay. So, but basically, most of the time it was Phil, and Phil was the one that I really worked with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what were your first activities at McFarland? Did you go to Sunday school or? Yes, we joined the uh, summit class and met up here on the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. And um, then the first thing I ever really did was on Wednesday night when they have the the classes and things. Mm -hmm. I you know, I went to classes and I loved it. Oh, the, the academy. Yeah, the academy. Mm -hmm. So finally, um, Kathy Mash asked me, would I chair that? So the I, academy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I did that for two or three years. I don't remember oh, mm -hmm. exactly how long, but I did that and uh, you know made the programs and all that. By the time I had learned how to use the computer, uh, and so then af after that. Um, Let's see, what else did I do? Is it, do we need to stop or anything? I don't know, we need to make sure it didn't shut off. It's run. It's okay. going, okay. Um, let's see, what else did I do? Then <laughs> Meryl and I were ushers. Yeah, you were telling us your, your first yeah. involvement. So. Um, that was the for a very first thing. And then Meryl and I ushered in our section and took up the money and oh. that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, what else did I do? They didn't very often have women ushers, so you were uh, kind of a pioneer in ushering guess, for women, I, I guess, also. We did it every Sunday, and there was another. I, there were two. There was another couple that I was always was supposed to contact and get them here too. Mm -hmm. uh, she's dead now, and um, but anyway, that's that's I did that. Okay, then let's see what else did I do. Let's see. So then, uh, Patty Castle was in our Sunday school class, and by that time. We had moved down to the bride's room. Yes. And uh, Phil asked, I don't know, I don't. I wasn't in charge of it, but he asked her, I think, to be in charge of decorating the room right outside the um, sanctuary door there on the oh, right. Yes. I don't know what it was ever called. Um, what, it, I think at one time it might have been study, the bride's room. At one point, I think bride's it was a library. Room. It was the bride's room originally. Yeah, it was the bride's room originally. But anyway, I uh, wanted her to decorate that, so mm -hmm. I helped her do that. And then we also did something, and I don't remember what, but to the front hall. To do what? We de we decorated or changed things around or did something in the uh -huh. front hall. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Then after that, or maybe during that time, I was on the administrative board. Oh, uh -huh. And then, um, so then he asked me, 
and then I might have been on the trustee. I think I was on the trustees. I was never chairman of that. Mm -hmm. But then Phil asked me to be chairman of the building committee. And so I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't, didn't even say what does that mean and what I have to do? <laughs> no, I don't know. I probably did. But anyway, um, so uh, we had a committee, and I, I think it was all men except me. And about when was that? I could not tell you. Mm -hmm. See, I, I... Early 90s, you think? Probably it was. Probably but it was. What, what kind of things did you start talking about right away? Okay. First of all, we had to get the committee. Uh -huh. And in the meantime, they had had some kind of um, a, um, oh, what do I want to say? Um, they, uh, they sent out this questionnaire to everybody. Oh, yeah. Wanting to know, you know, what you'd be interested in in a new building, what is important to you. what, And so we had that. And then, um, so we, I was chairman and we had the committee. And I didn't choose the committee. I mm -hmm. think Phil must have done that. So when you were brought into it, the idea of a new building was already established. Oh, yes, that, yes. That they wanted a new, that there was to be some kind of a new building. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then the first, you know, at our meeting, we decided, um, you know, we re looked over the resume, not the resumes, but the brochure that had gone out and looked at all that and talked about what we thought was important for mm -hmm. the, the church building. Vision, church visiting also. Church visiting. Well, yes, that was after... That was after we, the first meeting when we decided all that. And so then, of course, what we had to do is find an architect. And so we interviewed two or three, uh -huh. and the one we decided on was Howard and Brothers, or Howard and, and Associates, out of Oklahoma City. And he had done several churches in Oklahoma City and was well known. And so then uh, he told us which churches that we should visit, because we knew we wanted an atrium. That was the, one of the main things, was the atrium. So we went up to Westminster Presbyterian on Western in the city and looked at that um, at, at the atrium. And then we went to um, the Good Shepherd, Church of the Good Shepherd. Oh. It's a Methodist church up on Macar MacArthur. Mm -hmm. And so we went up there and looked at that. And so then, after seeing those two, what he had accomplished, we decided that we would have um, Howard and Associates do be the architect. And the man that worked with us was um, Garland Gilmore. And so he was, he was very easy to work with and very good. So um, then we had to get the design. We had to wait then for the design and all that for us to okay that. Um, anyway, that's, that's about how, you know, how we worked. We met, mm -hmm. I think, at least twice a month. Mm -hmm. uh, there was always little details and things that you had to get. But it was a great committee. We got a lot done. And um, About how many people did you finally wind up with on the committee? Only about six. Was that, okay, so and this was, this was the planning committee? This was the building planning committee. Okay. Uh, I, I had told Phil, I said, you know, I've been on the administrative board, and you cannot get much done with so many people so I yeah. would want a smaller committee because you get a lot more done and so we did yeah that's good mm -hmm. uh, so then after we got the plans and everything then we did have to interview um, construction companies and I don't remember which one we chose but we were happy with them mm -hmm. uh, but we several that came in two or three and we went over them and just you know what talked about it and decided which one to use and we were never sorry with the one we chose. So that's about it. Yeah, so as, as chair of the planning committee, did your role continue then as we got down to we had a, a building committee that had, had you know responsibility for different parts of the building to, to concentrate on and we had of course fundraising and now, all I of that. I had nothing so did, to do with fundraising. So you, your, your part of planning did not uh, include any of that? No. That was that was entirely somebody else. And didn't Judy Knapp do that? Um, or was she publicity? She was publicity. I am not sure. But anyway, but I will, no. I will try to look it up right now. But uh, 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 no. Uh, yeah, Judy was probably publicity. But no, uh, we didn't have anything to do with that. And mm -hmm. as far as I know, we kept you know kept working as a committee. We maybe not were meeting as many times, 
but to oversee and make sure everything was going yep. the way once, it was once the to construction go. actually uh -huh. was started right so you still had to kind of oversee in the committee mm -hmm. but but for as far as the fundraising and the uh, uh, specific little minute design within the building and all that you no. have to be you got to be a member of the congregation right uh, what was I going to say there was mm -hmm. something oh <laughs> it just flitted right out mm -hmm. uh, there was something else we did, but I can't remember. Maybe it'll come to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. I, that I had to. Re one thing that really scared me is we had to. I had to report to the congregation at, along the way what was oh. going on, mm -hmm. and that was scary to stand up there with oh. all those people. <laughs> it's a big, big sanctuary, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But anyway, I did that several times uh -huh. to bring everybody up to speed with what was going on, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Anyway, that's basically all I can remember. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big, big role. And I had, in, in talking to you ahead of time, uh, we had talked about the fact that, that uh, I felt like you were, as I looked at the records in our anniversary books of the different chairs of different committees, that I, it, it was pretty obvious that you and Judy Knapp were pioneers as far as chairing any really important committees. I was shocked when Phil asked me. but. I guess after doing those two decorating things, he thought, you know, I don't know, but mm -hmm. I was very happy that I was chosen, and mm -hmm. I didn't mind doing it. It mm -hmm. was, you know, it was work. I always had to make an agenda and, you know, oh, yeah. figure out all this stuff, but um, I thought it turned out well. And it, was, it did turn out to be a rewarding experience. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. Any regrets? No. <laughs> I can't think of many that I uh -huh. regret. And what I was just going to, I was the next thing I was going to ask is sort of along that same line. Is there anything that you specifically learned, or that you think maybe McFarland as a whole learned, in in planning and, and carrying out this event? That if that if you were, for instance, asked to do this in another place, anything that you had, that you learned that you would um, maybe do different or? No, not. You know, I I would stress don't have a huge committee because when this starts a lot of people say oh I want to be on it, I want to be on it but it has to be somebody that's dedicated that will come to the meetings and know what's going on and that you can have a concise meeting and not drag on for hours because people get tired of that so that's the only thing I can think of that I would suggest um, whoever's asking you or whenever they're doing it you know they need to know know the person and know they're going to follow through Mm -hmm. because sometimes that happens that they don't follow through and that was one thing I was pleased that I was able to do is to so did did the committee pretty well have a picture in their mind from the beginning of what they wanted this edition to look like maybe not look like but what we had in it uh -huh. you know we needed more classrooms we knew that um, and then the big room downstairs I don't know what this called now um, Fan hall yeah the, the, um, that was important because there really, other than the old room mm -hmm. downstairs in the basement, uh -huh. there really wasn't anything where you could gather. A fellowship and, hall, uh -huh. and a place for yeah. basketball. And, so um, that's the only thing that we really concentrated on. Mm -hmm. How about, um, and I didn't get this written down, so I'm springing you on this new. Uh, remember what you remember about the, I know we had the big, big service. And you said you weren't involved in the fundraising at all, but I'm sure you were probably there. The one we had out at Lloyd Noble, the big service that we had on Palm Sunday. Yes, I was there. Now, I really can't tell you anything about it. That's mm -hmm. been so long ago. Yeah, it but was. But no, I, I was there. Yep. I remember that, uh -huh. being there. But you got until to you mentioned it, I had forgotten about that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, we all went, and it was a wonderful thing. Oh, it was just... And we didn't plan that. I guess, you know, Phil must have done Somebody that. Somebody else, uh -huh. some other committee. Yeah. yeah. But we all I think, went. I think the Paydens, along with the Baumans, were chairing the fundraising, weren't they? I think so. Yeah. And uh, the, I think that, that probably was a good part there. Yeah, Diane and Mary. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they were very. Mm -hmm. They did lots of work and lots and spent oh, yeah. lots of time at McFarland. Mm -hmm. And I guess they still do. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah both of them. Um, well, let's get back to you uh, then as far as uh, I know that you're, we've already mentioned how busy you are. What kind of things are you involved in these days? I'm not as involved now as I was. Um, you know, I was in assistance league 
and that's a very worthwhile organization, mm -hmm. uh, clothing the children and doing the things we did there. Um, right now, I'm playing Mahjong, which I learned here at the academy when Donna Hughes ta taught a class. So I do that twice a month. In fact, it was at my house, and Diane was there. She plays. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I'm into rug hooking, the old-fashioned with the strips of wool, rug hooking. Mm -hmm. You use wool, and I have a stripper, and it, you strip it in different sizes, and then you hook this rug. I should have brought one to show you. They're really, it's an old-time thing that back in the uh, pioneer days, because they didn't have anything on their floor, and so they used what they had to make rugs. Oh, and oh, okay. They end up pretty heavy, but um, anyway, I love it, and it's you know I get started on one. Mm -hmm. In fact, I started one last night, uh, a Christmas one, and so I spend a lot of time doing that. And I like to quilt, and what else do I do? I was in a, a sewing group, and in a, um, a quilting group, you know, but I don't do as much of that anymore because I want I've been cleaning out. Because you never know, uh, uh -huh. you know, we did all of our estate planning and all that stuff, and Michael and Barbara are very clean people. They don't want a lot of stuff. And yeah. Sherma loves her stuff. <laughs> and so, oh, I belong to an antique club. Oh, yeah, And that's, that's always great. fun. I love mm -hmm. antiques. But I, um, I need to par down some of the stuff that I have around mm -hmm. the house. So anyway, that's about. So what, what does an antique club do? Well, every, we meet once a month, and we have some expert you know, oh. come in and tell us about different things. And uh, this month, we're going to the historical house, mm -hmm. and she's going to talk about fashion. And we've done, I mean, there have been ones on um, you know, pottery and um, china and just anything that's antique. Mm -hmm. uh, how to, to clean antique um, you know, linens and that kind of thing. So it's in, it's what we're interested in. It's a yeah. group that's interested in that, and um, so we have a good time. And I guess they advise you whether you should clean them and, or refinish and everything, or whether to leave them as they are. And yeah, whatever they, whichever subject it was uh -huh. we're doing. Uh -huh. And then uh, in, at Christmas we have a party and then uh, raise money, and it goes to uh, what well, we've donated several times to the um, historical house. Last year and the year before, I think we gave to the Christmas store. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just a fun group. We do nice things too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, are, sounds. Are you involved in the uh, <coughs> the one at Mason Penn Hall that does the, the quilting? The the Norman Quilters Quilt. No, I did. I was for a while, but no, not anymore. Yeah, they meet down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, moving on to kind of some uh, other thoughts. Uh, but what I had said about what I would like to ask you, when, when you see young people today dedicating their lives to Christianity, what advice would you give them? Oh, I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, um, it's, if they're dedicated, you know, I, I highly um, applaud that. But what do I want to say? Um, You know, just know that it's it's going to be an uphill battle mm -hmm. because there, it seems like more and more atheism is taking over, and it's just it makes me sick because I think we're losing something that America was founded on. So they have to be dedicated and know it's going to be very hard work, mm -hmm. and they're not going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And if that's important to them, don't get in it. But I highly recommend them. Wonderful. Uh, when I was in assistance league, I noticed the last few years that the ones, the young ones coming in, with all of us old ones there, um, they weren't, they really weren't interested in volunteering, and so um, that's a place where they could try to instill that to other people. My two granddaughters in Oklahoma City went to Bishop McGinnis. <clears throat> Before that, all Saint uh, Christ the King. Uh, what, every semester, they have to do a certain amount of service hours, and they're they're told, and um, it's part of their um, 
motto is that helping other people and doing things for others is very important. And so uh, I know this, Michael, I mean, Megan being a senior this year, their big thing was that they um, entertained the uh, Boys and Girls Clubs of America, of Oklahoma City, and had a, um, an Olympic thing. And they raised money. Every year they raise, um, they bring food, and the pounds of food just amazes me that they raise. So they're trying to instill in young people, and I think it's, you know, it'd be nice if other schools did that, because there's this many, me, generation, they only think about themselves, they don't always think about other people. And it's very important. Growing up, I didn't know that. And when I, when I married Meryl, in, at our first place in Shreveport, um, I started doing things. I volunteered at the Family Services, which was an organization that helped people coming in and out, and they would ask questions, you know, people moving in and this, that, and other. So I did that there and in Montgomery, and then I volunteered at the hospital as a Red Cross worker. And so uh, I found it very rewarding and enjoyable to do those things for other people. And I, I don't know how you can instill that in others, mm -hmm. but I think it's important. And if they're willing to do it, anybody that wants to do that and lead, lead the Christian life, that's great. So Which reminds me. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, which reminds me, it's completely off of course. In Shawnee, there were three guys in my class at, in Shawnee High that became ministers. Bill and then Barry and, um, oh, I can sing. Well, anyway, he was a basketball player, but they're all, they were all ministers. And so Shawnee High was very good. Yes. <laughs> So our young people need a strong support, family support, and, and church support behind them if they're looking at, at this and kind of a life. And what's sad is so many don't get it from their families. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of a mixed up world, where, which brings us to, so what are your hopes and prayers for Christianity worldwide in the coming years? I pray to God every day that somehow that he can enter these people's hearts that don't, don't believe in him, Mm -hmm. and who don't live like they should and and then you know I just I don't know what else to say but I just pray that somehow or other people will come around and start being what we used to be a God-fearing country mm -hmm. and quit taking God out of everything yeah. so I'm very simplistic I guess yes <laughs> well I've always said that the, the easiest way to understand religion is to teach it to your children because you have to make it simple enough when you, to, when you teach it to them to finally understand it yourself. So, anyway, I don't know where I, I would, I don't think I'd know where I would be if I didn't believe in God and mm -hmm. um, want to study and read the Bible and um, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's very important and I wish, see what's sad now is there's so many, well, atheist people are not teaching their children about God. They're, they're saying there is no God, but that's, mm -hmm. that's not true. And he, I got an email the other day from um, somebody that, Max Lurito, or what is his name? He said, Lucado. Lucado. Anyway, he says that God is in control and that um, he will take care of things. And he cited, uh, you know, some of the prophets and all that. So I'm hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we can be, I guess. That's, that's, I guess that's called faith, isn't it? Right. And I don't understand how people can live without faith, but that's happened. So do you think of anything else about your, uh, your leadership here at, at McFarland, your uh, participation in the different McFarland activities, uh, and that sort of thing that, uh, that no, we've missed? No, uh, but I enjoyed every one of them, or I wouldn't have done it. Uh -huh. It... Um, I think it's growing people, you know, it teaches you lots of things, working with people, which isn't always easy, but um, no, I don't regret a thing, and I think, you know, McFarland's a wonderful church. Um, and we were, we were very fortunate to have, have such strong leadership oh, yeah, at Phil. the time that, that we ventured into. Phil was absolutely, um, you know, he's wonderful. I was thinking of your leadership on the building well. committee. <laughs> we were fortunate to have you and, and well, Meryl also. 
yeah, I, I can say I enjoyed it, and um, I wouldn't take anything back. It's, mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah. I will say again, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I'm sure that you and I both will think of all kinds of things we oh, should have course. talked about once we're finished, of once course. the camera's off. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate your coming. Thank you very much, Beverly, and you too. Okay. Joe. Would you believe I'm exactly 